But looking at our uh, tight ends on the roster, uh, the cap hits going into this coming season. You obviously got Travis Kelsey, 15.4 mil, worth every penny, probably worth a lot more than that, uh, is worth a lot more than that. Um, Noah Gray, 3.1 mil cap hit. Er Smith Jr., about a $1.1 million cap hit. Then we got some new guys here. Garrett Prince, who we added to the roster uh, about summer of 2023 um, from UAB, uh, about 6'2", 241 guy. Um, I, I think, hold on. He is 6'4", 241, sorry. And then mm-hmm. Isaiah Gavings is a receiver. He was a receiver at Middle Tennessee State and now is a tight end in Kansas City. Pretty much sounds a lot like a guy like Jody Fortin. Um, who was receiver and then went to becoming a tight end. This guy, 6'4", 220. So this is a kind of a playmaker type of guy that we can maybe see. Maybe might have some juice, like Jody Fortson type juice with him. But, J.D., when you look at our tight end room, obviously we don't, I don't think we're going to carry all, all these guys going into the season on the active roster. But what do you think of the top-to-bottom room that we have right now? And do you think we'll be adding a rookie or uh, a tight end? Because a lot of people are saying – Go get a rookie tight end, maybe the, the the top three rounds of draft to you know have Kelsey take under his wing. Uh, I mean, I, I'm happy with 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 the room where it is. I like it, but I I do believe there are some guys, some, some sneaky tight ends out here right now. Uh, the very very talented, uh, very athletic, catch the football really well. Um, somebody sent me a couple of couple of guys, and I looked, and I was like, oh wow, like. You can you can catch a good tight end. I, I, I God, I can't even. I had, I had to go back through who this guy was, but he's easily could have been a third or fourth round pick, and he has all the the measurables that you need to be an effective tight end. Uh, does really well one on one. Does really well on zone. Uh, so you could definitely go and and draft a, a tight end. Uh, absolutely, you know because I think you, you have to think about who's going to be the heir apparent to to Kelsey. Right, so I, I don't think it's far fetched at all to go get a tight end in, in maybe the top three rounds, okay, or even four if you think you found somebody who can do that. First off, we got to think in our mind that nobody's going to be able to replace the productivity as a Travis Kelsey, okay? It's just Travis Kelsey is just one of those talents that comes along every once in a while, okay? Chiefs just happen to have the two best tight ends to ever play the game. It's the Kansas City Chiefs. OK, and so that's what happened there. Uh, but if, if you get a guy that can can learn like Noah Gray has learned under Travis, he's gotten better catching the football. He was good when he was at Duke, but he's learned a whole lot from Travis. OK, he's got he's learned how to get on the same page now with uh, with Patrick Mahomes. And so you bring a young guy in, teach him all the ropes of what he needs to do. He'll feel right, right, you know, really good in this room. He really could. Uh, just depends on who it is. That's what it boils down to. So I'm, I'm not I'm not opposed to getting a guy in the draft at all. Uh, the thing is, I think Travis would let the team know when he's like thinking, like, look, uh, this may be my last year. This may be my time. Uh, if they haven't had this conversation um, at all, period. So we'll just have to see. Uh, but yeah, I. I Shoot, getting a tight end in the draft, I, I, I'm 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 all for it. I'm all for it if it's the right fit, the right guy. So De- definitely, I don't want us to reach for a tight end just because we you know we we sense that the end is near. But it, it, you bring up a good point. Kelsey's definitely talked them about it because if we're talking about trying to win three peat or four peat, you know, trying to win more and more, and I don't think Kelsey's going to leave if we go three peat as a chance of going to a four peat. And I think Kelsey's definitely going to be in constant communication with our guys because look. If I'm saying I'm gonna give you three more years, then you don't need to rush to go get a tight end right now. You don't need to have to think of the the exit strategy with, with, with me. Use those picks on stuff we need because you you got me for the next two to three years, right? So like, it, uh, as long if you see a guy you really like, go for it. But mm-hmm. don't don't reach at my expense because I, you're, I'm gonna give you two to three more years. So like, I, I hope they are having that open communication and probably they definitely are based on how close this team is. Well, if you get a guy now, if you see a guy that you that you say, "Hey, man, this this guy right here has a lot to him," uh, that you can get, uh, yeah, you, you you go ahead and take a ticket on him. You know, I, I mean, the reason I say that is because it gives him two years. I'm, I'm just saying two two for Travis, 
It gives him two years to learn under Travis, right? And then you still have that guy, that young guy, for another two years. And you still have Noah Gray and, uh, you know, those things. So if you're trying to develop that, because Noah Gray be coming up, I think he he comes up, uh, what? I think next year. Next year, yeah. So, you know, and then Irv Smith only signed a one-year deal. So you, you don't, you don't know, though. Drew Tranquil gives us a, a beautiful example of, let's say, Irv Smith finally is, is healthy throughout a whole season. Yeah. He's gone. Hey, Irv, stay here for a two, three year deal. Why not? Sure. We hope he's answer. Yeah. Dude, he comes back and he's looking, you know, like uh, like his he had been doing, you know, the best of what he's been doing. Shoot. Irv, Irv is a starter in the league. Only 25, too. That, that's the thing. It's like, years I like he's been here for so uh, been in the league for a while that you think, like, oh, he's like 20, he's like 28. I mean, no, he's 25. So, like, if if he finally is done with the injury bug and, you know, he's, you know, he's, he's healthy and, and everything, and he can show that he can be healthy for a whole season. Like, okay, there you go. There's the tight end. Yeah. And and, and, and the thing is, a guy that could – he could run every route. Run every route. He stays healthy. He can be here. Like, who, this is the best place you could possibly be as a tight end. Because who you got throwing the ball to you? Let's patch Mahomes, the best quarterback in, in the business. And the Irv is sitting there saying, like, I'm going to a place that I know the tight is getting a whole lot of balls. So if I come in and learn the system, learn what Travis is doing, and I get my body back where it needs to be, and I, hopefully I stay healthy through all of this entire time, this entire year, this can absolutely revamp my career. Who's to say, you know, how these things operate, how they work? You know, nobody can see the future. So, yeah, man, I, I I think it's a good move for the for the for the Chiefs to to figure getting a guy in here. So, yeah, I'm, I'm looking here. Yeah, yeah, no, Gray is a free agent next year. Yep. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, and that's the thing too. It's um, I've seen this draft like we were talking about before. It's not as deep as last year's tight end draft. I still think we should have gone with one of those tight ends that the Green Bay took, but. Well, you know, we can't, we can't we can't go back in time anymore. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, but uh, Isaiah Gavins is an interesting one that uh, when Wendy's asked uh, about it quite a few times. Um, just talk about overall about the the transition from receiver to tight end and how and how much of a project that can be, JD. Because I know a lot of people think like, oh, these guys don't block anyway. Uh, uh, you know, for the most part, the tight ends become a glorified. Um, it's pretty much just a big receiver. You know, uh, so like. Kind of, talk, kind of talk about how that can be something that you have to learn and kind of transition into. Hey, man, look, it is, nothing can be more disrespectful than thinking that playing tight end is just an easy thing to do, okay? So I'm here to tell you. So I'm going to tell you all the ways, Marcus. Mm-hmm. One is you got to be physical, okay? You either got in or you don't, all right? And if you're going to do some inline blocking, then you better get ready to get your nose bloody, okay? And then if you have to lead and lead block, or you had to block a, a maybe a defensive tackle sometimes on the crack back or defensive end. Uh, you you better have some weight in your in, in, in your pockets as well. Or you don't get embarrassed and get tossed around. That's the thing about it. When you see on the outside somebody trying to gather the outside catcher that 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 corner, and he's not able to do it, you will be embarrassed. Everybody's gonna be able to see it, especially guys like me. I'm gonna see it as a former tight end and, and, and as a coach, I'm gonna be able to see it. So you ain't going to be able to hide. It don't, it don't work that way. And so if you're trying to lead up in, inside, if you're in the backfield, you will get your neck short and quick. You will find out. You will find out if you're made for this. So trying to make a transition from playing outside where you got somebody in space to now being a, you know somebody in your, in your face now, putting your hands on somebody is totally different. All right? Those guys out there on the corner, man, they eat lettuce and, you know, you know, fries. Okay, they ain't eating a whole lot. Cakes and all of those different things, man. They, they ain't got they ain't got no weight in them. But they ain't in the weight room. You ain't got nothing to worry about. Ain't nobody gonna hit you in the mouth out there. They gonna talk a big game. They ain't nobody gonna hit you in the mouth. As a corner, all right. Making fun of my corners out there, man. We might be seeing it. <laughs> what? When I'm talking about a linebacker and defensive ends who's got muscles everywhere, sucker's got muscles on his neck and his in, in his in his head. You seeing the look at him? Steam coming off? He's trying to kill you. Okay? He's trying to kill you. And I tell you what, 
like any other dogs, big dogs going to eat. They going to see. They going to find out if you got if your heart pumps Kool-Aid or not. You are going to find out real quick. Okay, <laughs> if you made it up for this. And so defensive ends will hit you in your throat. I'm telling you. I'm telling guys this all the time. And you know it. Breath be stinking. They, I'm trying to, it's a whole different animal. It's a whole different animal inside that box. A whole different animal inside that box. So uh, you better make sure. Better make sure. Muscles and eyebrows like Mike Tyson. <laughs> <laughs> Muscles and eyebrows like Mike Tyson. Absolutely. So you ain't got to worry about these guys coming in with the little halter tops, showing their little abs, because you're supposed to have abs at 180 pounds. Okay? All right? I'm talking about jokers who are 300 with abs. All right? Okay? Who can lift up the whole weight room. You understand? And so when you're a receiver and all of a sudden you think you're going to put your hand in the dirt and you sitting there look like you in a, 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 a frog stance, because sometimes when you start looking at guys like, oh, man, hold on, I got to work on your stance first. You're going to get killed out here, all right? I got I to explain to everybody what happened to you. So you got to make sure that a guy is right and he's fit to come in there because his life is on the line. You're going to know real quick who you are. So that's what I say, man. Don't think for a second. It's just going to be an easy job. So in essence, it's a uh, it's- – it's a gatherings is, is a is a project. So now I'm looking at the the uh, the measurables here, almost identical to Jody Fortson, six four two twenty two. He's six four two twenty two. Uh, Jody is six four two twenty six. So pretty much identical to uh, Jody Fortson in that. Um, hey Jody, I mean you know he he was kind of a project. I mean uh, with us before he finally got on the team and stuff. So it was a big deal when he made the team finally. So like. I mean, there, there, there is going to be an element of Gathings having to kind of uh, gain his bearings in that tight end position. It's a real deal, man. I'm trying to tell you. Yeah, and you got you got to know if your back is built for it, you better get in the weight room real quick. You know, you're in the backfield, you run, you know, a couple of wheel routes and, you know, on the safety. That's, that's fine. That's, you know, that's, that's the easy job. That's the easy part. But like I said, when you sit over and you're looking up, you know, somebody on the end and you got, you know, uh, Crosby and all those get the TJ Watt and those dudes hitting you in your mouth. It's a totally different thing. There's a whole different headache right there. So, uh, I, I if I was somebody, I take the little guys outside all day long to go, you know, fight against. Right? <laughs> so, all right. So, in essence, we're, we're gonna have to see what Gallons can show us uh, in preseason next year. Yeah, we we have to see, man. We have to see. But I, I'm sure because. We, we hear that a lot. Like I think, I think it was like like last year when uh, Philadelphia signed Julio Jones. Oh, just make him a tight end. Just make him a tight end. I mean, like it's, it's that easy just to make a guy a tight end. It's got to be insulting to, to to hear that. Man, look, love T- Tim Tebow to death, but that whole that whole journey that they was trying to make Tim Tebow into a tight end, I thought was just disrespectful because I was like, they have no idea how hard it is. When he came in and did the little roll and try to get the guy on the ground. Like, man, he missed the block. Like, it's, it's 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 not that easy. It's not an easy job to do. So I I, I just thought, oh, man, he looks great. Oh, it looks like a block. That looks like a technique block. Somebody tried to, like, somebody literally tried to argue with me about the block that he did was technically sound. Man. And I said, the type of block that happened that he did, did he try to perform, he tried to attempt, will get somebody killed. That didn't get somebody hurt, right? That didn't get somebody hurt. Uh, Isaiah, he should be good then. Yeah, we, we, Isaiah should be good. We'll see. We'll definitely see. I hope he. I hope he's good. I hope he comes in. I hope because it's it's, it's will and want to. It's what it is, Marcus. If you want to block somebody who's bigger than you, you want to hit somebody in the mouth. It's will and want to. That's what it's that's what it boils down to, right? It's like you want on, on on the schoolyard a big bully in front of you. And that sucker keeps picking on you. It's a will and a want to to swing back at this joker. Are you that guy? Okay. Now, you've done it one time. Now I'm going to line you up. I want to keep seeing you do it over and over again. Keep swinging at the bully. Keep swinging at it. Yeah, you might have your, your butt handed to you. Toss that at the club every once in a while. Get back up, dust yourself off, and get your butt back in there. That's the way it's going to be. Now I feel like I'm coaching. Now I feel like I'm <laughs> coaching that. So. Right. From a coach's perspective, though, they obviously see something in him that that could be like, okay. We can make the conversion there because, like, why? Why would I mean? Obviously, 
maybe not be as fast to be a, a wide receiver in the NFL. They could say, okay, maybe we can put you at a tight end spot. You got to get, you know, got to get you more like add some weight to you a little bit, but like yeah. they obviously see something right that like, okay, we can maybe try to make the conversion there. Yeah. Yeah. Well, part of it is it's the matchup. I think it's what, what coaches see. They covered that. So it's like, you're, you, you're too big to be a wide receiver. And like if you ain't if you're not fast enough, well, let's move you inside then. How about that? How do you match up against linebackers and safeties as opposed to corners? If you're not getting open, you're not getting separation, then let's put you inside so you can get separation on some guys. And you're just gonna out, out athletic guys, right? You might you might be quicker than linebackers. Okay. And so I think that's that's what they see. They see a guy like that. So he's like that tweener, right? We talk about tweeners. So it's the same thing when you look at defensive ends. And we talk about Mike Dana and Aaron, all those different ones. Warrington and, and you know, Amenahu. Those guys can play in two different worlds, okay? Mm-hmm. Are you effective in playing those two different worlds? And so uh, Chris, who made a transition from one inside to the outside, he can do both, right? Because, like, man, let's see what he can do out here. I thought it was a great thing. Right, I, you know, people. Oh, that's a bad experiment. So why? Shoot, let him get used to it. Because when he start getting out there, he gonna start eating once he start figuring these things out. And so with a guy like Isaiah uh, Gavins or Gavins, or however you say his name, uh, he may be able to figure those things out. He may be figuring those things out. But let's just not think that you know playing tight end is some type of uh, you know field day because it's not. <laughs> right now, now obviously the way the offense is going right now, it's a pass the league. So it's making it easier for a guy who's a wide receiver becoming a tight end. Yep. Easier. Easier, but not, not a gimme by any means. Mm-mm. Make sure, make sure you guys know that, people. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, so pretty much the bottom line is Kelsey, Gray, and Irv Smith are the three guys to be looking at this year. And uh, Irv Smith, I'm, uh, ex- I'm really excited about that, uh, that addition to the squad. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out the best clips from Chief Concerns. And if you prefer to listen to the show, subscribe and follow us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and anywhere else you get your podcasts.